Hello and welcome to the next episode. There's one more really important feature I need to discuss with you. It's custom uh, calls that have not been implemented by us, but they are absolutely supported by the plugin. Just like any network that is not in the default configuration network can be constructed by hand uh, from the structure. So to prove that, I want to make a new actor, <coughs> which will be just called B. Um, and let's say block number and this actor needs a <coughs> text renderer okay let's make it a zero and maybe center it and maybe move it forward by uh, just one centimeter is enough. Okay, and we're not going to change its color or anything like that. Um, let's go into event graph. Let's. We only need just tick and begin play. For begin play again, uh, we need blockchain configuration because we're going to refer to it, promote it to variable, store it locally. We don't need any wallet, we just need this. We're not going to do anything that is really hard to make. Uh, custom event. And we're going to make an event. Get uh, latest block number. Okay. <clears throat> Get latest block number. So what we want to do, we want to do uh, an RPC call, which is a custom RPC call, which you can see it doesn't have parsed inputs and outputs, and we can basically pass anything we want through it. So we can get our blockchain config, split the structure, take the URL. Now method we want to call, it can be literally any method that uh, we want to use. So Hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. I just went to Ethereum Org to find uh, information about JSON RPC. And we have this eat uh, block number. And we're going to call this function. And it is absolutely not being already used uh, inside the engine, which we have to implement ourselves. But that shouldn't be a problem. So it is called eat underscore block number let's make sure that it is just in case it would be case sensitive let's copy paste it and it has parameters mm, oh it has input parameters none and it returns quantity which is just a value which we gonna have to parse okay so it has empty parameters. We don't have to put anything. Normally what we would do, we would construct a JSON and just construct those parameters in order as specified in the specification. But this very simple method has no parameters. Okay, so once it is completed, what we wanna do is we want to break this response and we want to check if it's a success. Uh, and if it is a success, we want to take body and want to just print string and see what happens. Okay, so now on tick, we want to get latest block. <clears throat> and we don't want to do it 60 times a second, so we will just go into class uh, defaults and we're going to set tick rate to 6 seconds. Or maybe even something lower three three okay so we are getting the block number for the blockchain that we selected so polygon mainnet mm, let's place this actor in the scene somewhere so it can even start working at all um, and let's hit it in single player Let's see what it is saying. It is giving us JSON RPC version ID of the code that we didn't give, and it gives us a result which is a number, but it is 
hex value number. Okay, so we know that this call is already working. What we need to do now is just get uh, this body and we need to get a proper value. Let's let's look again. Uh, okay, it's result. The key is result. So we know that this is a JSON. Uh, um, we need to parse it as JSON, <coughs> which means that we need uh, any of the plugins that allows you to parse JSON. They, there is a number of plugins that can do that. I honestly don't want to enable more plugins into this uh, project because it, this project should rely only on a single plugin. Uh, so I'm going to have to do it differently. I'm going to have to find the value I'm looking for inside this string through some hackery. So, okay, back. <laughs> so the way to parse this JSON response and get the actual result is to find the substring result. When I find the result, I have that result is uh, what six signs. So I have to remove um, from this point another nine signs. So I'm taking the find result from end, which is like the uh, left of the string. <clears throat> I add the nine signs, so I delete result and then I delete the next two signs, uh, the next three signs, and I chop this text away. Then I am returned with the rest of the string, and then I chop the end of it, the last two signs. And what I got left is the row value of the hex that I am getting returned from this call. Now this hex I can interpret into a value directly into uint. So I am doing that because make literal uint, like you can see here, if the value prefix is 0x, it will be interpreted as hex value. So I am converting hex value to a number. And now I am taking this number and I am converting it to string and then this string I am converting to text and this text I am going to uh, have here. I can also do format mm, format text. I can say block number number. I can do it like this and I can just put in directly this. Okay, so now doing this, I constructed a custom call. Custom block size call. Uh, and I can even say uh, blockchain, blockchain block number number. Okay, so now having this, I can get the value of the blockchain config. I can split it and can get the blockchain config network name as well and put it here. So now if I run the game, I will get this blockchain polygon mainnet block number. And you can see that this block number every six seconds is updated. <coughs> And sometimes within six seconds, I will get one block. Sometimes I will get two blocks in six seconds. So it's uh, very fast. And currently we are on block 34 uh, million. And we got integer limit, uh, at least integer 32 limit. But uh, like the number we are getting is a uint. So it's a, a giant number. Uh, but if we want to parse it into normal uh, integer, we still got uh, plenty of numbers left. So yeah, this way I constructed a custom call to blockchain. It could be any blockchain really. And uh, it got executed correctly. I got a response and I parsed this response. Uh, so you can do it as well. So we are constantly working on bringing new functions into the plugin. But if you need this plugin to do something that it doesn't right now, there's probably very easy way to do it yourself. And when we finish uh, parsing of the new nodes, you'll just uh, swap it out to the official function.
Uh, but yeah, with this plugin, you can call any function on any blockchain.